Well, sh Rob tries to fix a thing. Rob tries to fix a thing, yeah. Remember this. You never know, it could be the socketed chips. Ah, there we go. So, it turns out that as I press down on this area, um, specifically this chip, I sort of heard a crack and the machine started to work again. So, uh, I'm guessing that uh, these sockets are probably not the best and over the course of months uh, maybe the temperature differential sort of you know shifted the chip up and it lost electrical connectivity so when I snapped it back in it worked again so again I'm suspecting these sockets are actually not that great I might replace them with maybe higher quality sockets okay now the problem, uh, the remaining problem really that I've been having uh, is the fact that some of the items, uh, like the tanks, don't actually appear, while some other items do. Now we know that one of these DACs, uh, or possibly both of them, I can't even remember whether I replaced both before, we know that that was bad. I think it was actually one of them and probably the uh, X DAC. Um, and we know that that was bad, so I replaced it and that worked just fine. So uh, the thought was, and I'm having trouble uh, holding this light up because again, I don't have any light in this room, sorry about that. So the speculation was that there was a Z DAC which controlled the intensity and maybe that was failing. Now, I found these two DACs and then there's another one here called DAC which happens to be connected to the Y output as well. So I only see X out, there's a test point here for X out, and Y out, and there's a test point there for Y out, but I don't see Z out. So where is the intensity generated? Let's take a look at the schematic. Now, what I've got here is uh, the schematic for the um, vector generator board, which includes the analog output so uh, let's see, um, I can focus in on this area here, I suppose. Okay, uh, so this is one of the DACs right over here and the inputs are labeled DVX. So that's the X data uh, input and hopefully you can see that. Um, and if we go ahead and look to where it ends up, if I can scroll this, uh, it ends up up here where it says X out. So this is the analog output circuitry for X. So let's see if we can find Y. And here, over here, is Y. We can see that the inputs are DVY, so that's the digital data. And the output is right over here. So if we just follow that over, we can see over here Y out. So this is the analog uh, output for Y. Now the question is where is Z or intensity? And right over there, we can see Z out. So there could be something wrong with this circuitry. So let's take a closer look. And we can see that actually it's interesting. There is something like a DAC, uh, except it's basically handmade. So we've got these flip-flops over here, which actually take some of the DVX and DVY lines. And uh, this goes to a multiplexer, and you can see that there's also Z0, Z1, and Z2, which is kind of interesting because maybe that's uh, Z data, I'm not quite sure. Um, and the outputs for this multiplexer and for this flip-flop go to resistors, so these resistors alternately get tied to plus 5 or ground, and there's a uh, resistor ladder basically that goes from plus five down to ground here. So effectively, this is a digital to analog converter. 
So the question is, um, is there something wrong with this flip-flop, this flip-flop, these XORs, this multiplexer, this AND gate? Uh, probably these resistors are fine and probably these transistors are also fine because I do get some variation in intensity. So I think that what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull those chips from the board and then just stick them in a breadboard and test them just to make sure that they're working. Okay, so uh, I'm looking for F8, uh, C7, D7, and H8 on this board. So let's take a closer look at it. Okay, so uh, the way these um, old timey boards are uh, laid out, basically the chips are all on a grid. Um, and typically with a four layer board, you've got traces running, uh, say horizontally or vertically, and the traces underneath go the other way, which indeed they do. Uh, and that makes routing pretty much a snap in most cases, uh, with the inner layers being power and ground. Um, we can see over here on the side, it says B and B and I think, oh, that's silk screen. Okay, I was kind of hoping that that was going to be um, a layer marker, but I believe this is only a two layer board. So um, the uh, columns or rows or whatever, in one axis it's labeled according to the letter, and in another axis, axis it's labeled according to the number. Uh, so here we have A6, B6, C6, and so on. So because we're looking for F8, that means we have to look along the F, and there's F8. So I'm just going to mark that. F8, so that I don't forget. We're also looking for C7, which should be here. C7, we're looking for D7, which should be right next to it. And we're looking for H8. So let's see, H8. So there's H8 right there. So those are the four chips that I'm going to remove and test. Now, the other thing that I suppose I could look into are those transistors. Um, and those transistors were labeled uh, Q7 and Q9, which unfortunately doesn't do anything because those aren't uh, numbered according to the matrix, but they're going to be somewhere around here. Um, and in fact, here I see Q7. Uh, it, no, no, that's Q2, I think. Uh, okay, there's another Q, that's Q3, so that's not it. Um, the output is labeled Z out. I don't actually see. Ah, here we go. There's Z out right over there. And we have Q9 over here. And Q7 is right over here. Um, Q8 doesn't seem to be in that circuit, so there are those two transistors. Maybe there's something wrong with that, with those, um, but I think it's a little suspicious that some of the levels of intensity work and some of them don't. Ah, there was one other chip that I didn't mention, that I didn't notice, and that's this uh, AND gate right over here. So that's J9. So I'm also gonna pull that out. So J9. FHJ9, that's right over there. So we've got these five chips to look at. So I've got my Hakko FR300 desolderer, and I've marked out J9 right over here. I've got some extra solder in case I need to refresh this, um, which I probably will just to um, just to be able to get enough solder in there so that it sort of flows to the other side of the board and then when I suck it out, it sucks out the, the entire thing. So let's go ahead. The uh, ground and VCC ones, especially the ground one, uh, is most difficult to do because there is a larger, um, usually there's a, a larger bit of metal connected to ground, so it's harder to heat all that up and get it going. So in any case, now that I've got um, 
Now that I've got all the pins desoldered, I'm going to wiggle them a little bit to make sure that they're all loose. Seems like they're loose. And then I'm going to attempt to pull it open. So J9 is uh, this, this one? No? Yes. Okay. So um, it does look like Go. I'm just doing it gently because if you don't, uh, if, if you're still leaving solder in there, it's probably going to pull up a trace or even worse, it's going to pull up the, uh, the uh, coating inside the holes, which is really bad. So, so that's pretty good. Um, I just also want to make sure that there's a pin one designator. And in this particular board, uh, it's a square pin instead of the round pin. Uh, and there's no dot. So that corresponds with the dot on the IC. So that's pin one right over there. So now I can take this out and test it. Now, instead of uh, putting it into a breadboard, uh, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to get out my uh, TL-866 programmer because that also has the ability to test some of these TTL chips. So um, let's go ahead and Take a look at what that looks like. So here is the TL-866. Interface, and here's the TL-866 itself. Okay. So what I should be able to do is pull up, uh, let's see, select IC. Um, Okay, and now I should be able to search the device. I think I'm going to have to pull out the keyboard for this one. So I'm looking for Logic IC. And it's going to be a device, 74, uh, it's an LS11. Great, there it is. So I'm just going to select it. Okay, and now it shows me how I'm supposed to put the chip in. So pin one, where's pin one? Right here. So pin one is gonna go up here. And I'm just gonna hold that down like that. And then I'm gonna hit test. Okay, and it tests the gates. In this case, there were only three gates in here. And it says that the test result is normal. So at least in theory, you know, if we are to believe um, the company's methodology of testing this particular logic chip, it's gone through all the combinations and determined that this chip is okay. So that's one chip down, four to go. Okay, chip H8 is, according to this, a 25LS399, which is the same as a 74LS399. So let's see if it exists, 74LS399, and we're out of luck. There is no such thing. Sure, I can look for 25LS399, but of course it's not gonna be in there. So this chip we're gonna to have to breadboard. And the problem again with uh, you know, something like this that's not open source is that uh, there just is no way of adding anything yourself. You basically have to go to the company and petition to have it added for you. Chip F8 is a 74LS175. 74LS175. It's there, so we can test it. So let's go ahead and stick it in and run test. And it says that the results are normal. So we guess that this chip, F8, is okay. Okay, the next chip is a 74LS85. That's an XOR chip. So 74LS85 is most likely in here. 74 LS 85. What? It's not? Seriously? That's like the simplest chip to. Wow. 74 85. Okay. 
If it's not in there, it's not in there. There's a 7486, which is also an XOR, but okay. The 85 is not in there, so that will need to be tested on a breadboard. And the final chip leading up to the analog section is chip C7, which is a 74174. So let's see if it's there. It is. We'll select it. Make sure we've got pin one in the right place. Let's see, where's pin one on this thing? I believe that's this. Let's test. And it's showing that it's good. So three out of five chips are testable and they all show good. So we now need to breadboard these other two chips. Now, interestingly, um, on the schematic, we see that D7 is an LS86, which is an XOR. The chip that I pulled is an LS85. And a 74 LS85 is a 4-bit magnitude comparator, which is interesting because it bears no resemblance to, an XOR, to a, a quad XOR gate. So was the problem simply that somebody put the wrong chip into this board? And the answer to that is perhaps. So I suppose what I could do is just resolder all of the chips and replace this chip with a 74 LS86. Uh, and that presumably will have the correct function. Now, before I do that, I still want to check this other chip, which is the 399. Now, again, I know it says uh, 25 LS399. Uh, what's the date code on this? 1979. So um, I think at that point, the 25 series from AMD was pretty much the same as the 74 series. I'm going to go look that up just to make sure, 25 LS 399. So the idea behind uh, this particular chip, the 399, is that it's a combination 4-bit multiplexer and 4-bit register. So the 4-bit multiplexer lets you put uh, 4 bits on, on uh, section 1 and 4 bits on section 2, and then you've got a word select which selects between section 1 and section 2. So if word select is low, it selects the uh, first 4 bits, and if word select is high, it selects the second 4 bits. Then there's a clock which takes the output of that multiplexer and just clocks it into the output. So what I've got set up here is um, five volts. I've got, I've got my uh, logic probe right here. So uh, the idea is that what I've done is I've taken the first bit. So I've got section one is this blue wire going to ground and section two is this yellow wire going to plus. So we've got zero and one, and word select is this green wire which I have connected to ground. And the clock is this other green wire. So if I strobe the clock, it will register uh, whatever bit is being selected. So in this particular case, I'm selecting this bit right over here. So the output should be zero when I clock it. So let's go ahead and measure. This is the, this is the input of, of the first section bit, low. And the output, uh, sorry, the input of the second one is high. So currently the output is high. And the word select is low. So if I strobe the clock, let's see what happens to the output it's low. So if I strobe the clock again, it should remain low. And if I change word select to high, it's gonna select the other bit. But of course I haven't clocked it, so the output is still low, 
and when I clock it, it's going to clock the other bit, which is high. So that means that this chip is working at least for the first bit. So all I have to do is check the other bits and then I can say that this chip works. Okay, so all the bits on that chip were checked and they all work fine. So that's the 399 that works, the LS11 AND gate that works, the 175 flip-flop that works, the 174 flip-flop that works, and the 86 is the one that we were not able to uh, determine works because it was an 85 on the board. So I think uh, all that's really left to do is to replace all the chips, including the 86 with the correct one, and then plug the board in and see what happens. Okay, so I scrounged through my parts bin and I found a 74 LS86 that I pulled from some random circuit board. So of course I need to test it to make sure that it works. So let's go ahead and search for uh, 7486 and there it is. It's gonna be the first one. So let me make sure that I'm putting this in the right way. And it goes in like this. And test. And it's showing that this is a good chip. So I can take this and put this into the board. Okay, with that chip replaced, I just wanna check out this, um, this ROM right here, and specifically the socket, uh, to make sure that there's nothing weird going on with this thing. So, oh, well, that's, that's uh, it's one of these kinds of sockets. So uh, those are the wipers in there, and these are the spacers. They just sit right on top, and then you stick the chip in right there. So um, I'm going to examine the chip for any signs of corrosion. I don't see any. And I'm going to examine uh, this for any signs of corrosion. I don't see any. Um, I, as a rule, really don't like these kinds of uh, sockets because, well, they're weird. <laughs> and I just don't like them, but apparently they're okay. So I am just going to whack the chip back in pretty firmly. I may as well do the same thing for the one right next to it, right? So there's that, there's that, that's done. Place it in. And give it a good press. May as well press some of these other chips in. They seem pretty, pretty uh, rock solid. So let's go ahead and put this board back in the machine and fire it up and see what happens. Okay, so the board is back in, and let's just plug the machine in and give it a shot. Okay. I'm hearing sounds, which is good. And let's take a look. Okay, we've got some video output now coming. Great. That looks pretty good. And I actually see the radar. I don't know if you can see it. It's kind of it's kind of hard to see with the with the glare. Uh, let me go to the other side maybe. I don't know if you can see, the radar is actually spinning, which it didn't do before. So I think, and in fact, we've got some blinking up here. Uh, let's see, oh, it's not blinking anymore, but uh, that wasn't doing that before. So let me go ahead and uh, open up the coin slot and get it started.
Okay, here we go. Let's see. Do I see any tanks? Do I see anything? Well, that was my shot. Oh. straight ahead. I mean, the radar blip is going. Where's the tank? Is it straight ahead? I think it is. Whoa! Okay, there's a triangle. It's in range. Oh. Still don't see the tank, though. I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to play it a little more and see if I can actually see the tank appear uh, and then report back. Okay, well, I did see the tank. Um, the tank still seemed a little bit dim to me, but, you know, at least I could see it. So, I guess I count this as a success. So, uh, I guess that's it. So, um, uh, the reason that this thing wasn't working was that, uh, there was the wrong chip installed. Uh, a 7486 is an XOR, not a 7485. So, I don't know if, uh, you know, maybe they were looking through their chips and they saw an 85 and they thought it was an 86 because the 5 looked like a 6, I don't know. Anyway, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed. And uh, remember that a uh, part of troubleshooting is hitting that like button. See ya.